Yeah, shalethingscentury.com. So it's fairly well accepted that at this point, so it's March 2012, an intracanal medicament that we're commonly using, I mean there are probably hundreds of them, is calcium hydroxide. It has a, its pluses and benefits, but classically right now, um, say between re, uh, phases of uh, a retreatment, or depending on your periradicular tissue, uh, your diagnosis of that, you may be using intracanal medicament. So often folks say, okay, um, you know, what do you use? I use calcium hydroxide. Great. Ne never was there a discussion about how do you actually place it in there. And often that's kind of uh, one of the things I want to talk about today because I'm part of uh, an endo um, mail email thing that comes out from uh, a friend of mine in the UK. And they were talking about extrusion of calcium hydroxide in the periradicular tissues. Well, if you've never been introduced and no one's ever talked to you about placement of calcium hydroxide, I mean, and like I said, I'm no expert. This is just sort of what I've been uh, taught and over the past uh, decade of using it. So here's my, uh, this is what I used to do. I'd take my UltraCal or whatever calcium hydroxide material you're using, place a little, because I had nothing else, and I didn't know anything better and I would place this into the your canal at the orifice then I would take a file uh, a K file, this is after I've instrumented the canals and I'm just placing my medicament and then go to my working length and sort of mix it in there, I mean just looking to get a, a decent coating of the entire canal, now you can see I'm trying to prevent getting that file out the apex Okay, so there's that. So I've coated the walls, fair enough. I mean, that's one way of doing it. Another way uh, that I've been introduced to is using, uh, these are called Navi tips. By no means am I advertising for one company, but this is just what we have. And this is a stainless steel tip, 25 millimeters long. You can get them in different sizes. And this is a 29 gauge, which I looked on, uh, I could say I calculated, but I had no idea what it was. So I looked online. 29 gauge equals 0.26 millimeters, so that's just less than a 30 file. And I'm going to show you placement, and I'm not using the microscope because probably 80% of folks watching these videos don't, aren't going to have a microscope, so it doesn't really do any good. And I can show you the microscope, but it doesn't really serve any purpose. And calcium hydroxide placement in a microscope is much easier than um, actually endodontics is much easier with a microscope than just with loops. But let's just do it with loops at this point. So I've measured off. I'm going to stay approximately two millimeters short of my apex. I mean, you can go one, you can go at the apex because this is uh, the material. Let's show you here. The material comes in this. You can get side ported ones. Uh, the material is going to come right out the end in this one. And this is a really good point. As you can see, nothing's coming out. This has to be fairly flowable. So you got to make sure that yeah, it's flowable. And these tips are so small that they might just get. Uh, bunged up. Okay, so you can see, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to practice some extruding the material. So what I'm going to want to do is that I want to extrude the material at a nice rate and then pull coronally. So I'll pretend that, so let's put the tooth there. So we're going to extrude it, extrude it at a little bit at the apex and then slowly work my way coronally to get a nice dense uh, fill of calcium hydroxide so all the walls are coated. Um, we use calcium hydroxide because it has a high pH. There is some argument that Efecalis has a proton pump. We were just discussing that yesterday after our written boards, but we're not going to get into that in depth. So let's go with the mesiobuccal canal. And one of the things you have to watch because it is a small canal, and so you open and shape to whatever file size you're using, and these are be flexible, bendable. How about that? So let's place it in there, and you can see it extrude out the end. So that is an important point right there. That you need to make sure that you're not going to extrude beyond your apex. So let's place that. I'm going to do it tabletop style. All right, so let's pull back two millimeters from there, and then extrude. So what I'm going to do is we'll show you from the coronal portion what it looks like. Now in the microscope it's really, it's actually fairly easy to do. Oh yeah, 
guess I really, somehow I ended up in the buckle, the pelvic canal. There we go. Okay, off we go. So, like I said, you can see the calcium hydroxide, actually the reflection in the canal in the microscope. So I'm going to start extruding. Actually, I'm going to test to make sure it's extruding. Okay, it is. I'm placing the canal is to the apical extent that I want, which is approximately two millimeters short of the apex, and then just start locking it out slowly. And there you can see it. And I've tried to not extrude any of the, uh, the apex, so you could take a file and run it down there, I suppose, if you want. But you've filled, you've filled it uh, to the point of, yeah, see, so don't do that, because that will pull it out, and I haven't done that for years. So once it's set, once it's in there, just leave it, and you're set. Now the whole, the whole intent of this is to ensure you have a nice, dense fill of calcium hydroxide contacting all the walls, so as an idea to try to eliminate as many bacterial, microbacterial microorganisms as possible. So I hope that helps. Uh, just some food for thought in placement of calcium hydroxide. Cheers.